Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I wanted to continue my Ramda series of videos, but instead of doing another refactoring video or a case study on refactoring, I wanted to do something new. I wanted to make a video where instead of refactoring, in order to better understand Ramda, we're gonna write pieces of Ramda totally from scratch in JavaScript. Now, we're not gonna write them to the high standards of Ramda. They're not gonna be totally as industrial strength and bulletproof and production ready as any of the Ramda code is, but they should be good enough for these examples and good enough to illustrate what these actual combinators or functions that Ramda provides you can do. So as we're going through this example, you can actually feel free to code along. I'll let you know whenever I'm about to code up a new piece of this and you can feel free to pause and follow along. Now, this actual example we're going to do is from the very first video I made on Ramda. It's the simple loops refactoring video. I'll share a link to it now. And also I'll put a link to the code down in the description so that if you'd like to copy it, you can. I'm just using Node.js to run it. Um, and also there are a couple of specs I have to make sure as I go along, it still works. And I'll just be running those specs by calling out to the Jasmine executable and giving it the spec file. And that should work for you too. If it doesn't, let me know and we can figure it out. But as you can see, by default, all the specs pass. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start. Now, the first function I wanna start with is this prop function. The reason I wanna start with it is simply because it's simple. So to start, let's remove R. And now you'll notice everything will fail because prop is not defined, prop is not a thing. So let's go ahead and let's write prop ourselves. So prop, and now if you want to tag along, if you want to code along, this would be a good time to pause and try it yourself. But basically what prop is gonna do is prop takes the name of a JavaScript property and then it returns back a function which will take an object and call that property on it. So this is actually very straightforward. So we actually need to take a property and then what we want to do is we want to take some object and what we want to return back is the object indexed at that property. And that's it. That's as straightforward as these kind of functions get. Let's run it and make sure it still passes. And it does. Awesome. We're all green. Now let's move on to another function. How about has? has is a lot like prop, except it returns a Boolean value. It doesn't index, it simply tells you, is this property in the object? So let's write has, let's delete the R out. And I'm just gonna copy prop to begin with, but I'll erase it so that you can, if you would like, follow along by coding it up yourself. So what has is gonna do is it's also gonna take a property and then it's gonna take an object and then it's just gonna ask, is this property a key in the object? Now there's this function called in in JavaScript, which I think will do nicely for this. So in object. And basically what in does is it says, well, is this property in the object? It's really that straightforward. There's not much else to it. One thing that it does that's kind of nice is if you set the value to undefined, technically the property is still in the object. So in will still return true. Um, saying object at property equals equals undefined is not totally foolproof because you can have objects that look like this. Foo undefined. And technically undefined, or foo rather, is a key in that object. So let's run our tests and make sure they still pass. And they still do. Awesome. And let's move on to something else. How about map? Map's fun. So to do map, let's again get rid of the R. So we're just kind of deleting out Ramda bit by bit. So const map equals, and this time we'll give you a little more of a hint just to start you off if you want. If you don't want it, feel free to pause right now. But anyways, map takes a function and then it takes an array of values and then it does something with those values. So to implement map, I'm simply going to uh, invoke the natural map that exists in JavaScript, in the newer versions of JavaScript. Not even that much newer. Most modern browsers support array.map. So that should be all you need to implement map. Let's make sure I'm not telling a lie. I'm not so far, everything still passes. Shockingly, maybe I should here. Let's do something different. Let's make this uh, always return 42. 
That way I can just see that the, I'm really running the right tests and yep, everything's going wrong when I do that, good. So let's see, okay. So next let's do filter. That's the next function we'd like to move over. So let's remove R and again, let's run it without R just to see, yep, everything blows up, filter is not defined, subject is not a function, body, body, body. Um, filter will also look like map. And if you'd like to implement it yourself from scratch, feel free to go now. But I am gonna start from map and instead of accepting just an arbitrary function, I'm gonna accept a predicate. If you're not familiar with a predicate, a predicate is like a normal function, but it returns true or false. It answers yes or no. So I'm also, in this case, going to dispatch to the JavaScript built-in array filter. And this should work. Excellent, it still does. All right, so let's go ahead and implement the very last part, pipe. So let's remove Ramda, and at this point we can fully remove Ramda because there's no more usages of it anywhere. So if we run this file, you notice pipe is not defined. Now, to do this, I'm really just gonna hack out pipe at first because it's a slightly harder function than the other ones we've implemented so far, but we will make it nicer, so have no fear. So function pipe, so first thing, we're gonna get the arguments that were passed down to the function. Notice that pipe accepts really any number of arguments. So args is arguments. We're gonna use this handy um, JavaScript object for arguments, which gets you all of the things the function was called with. Uh, dot slice, dot call, in order to turn the arguments into an array. So now we've got all of the arguments and let's build up a function which represents the piping together of the given functions. So let's turn back a function which takes in an ax. Again, I know there's nicer syntax for all of this, but it's probably good enough for now. So we can say let result at first just equal x. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the args and we're gonna loop over each one. And I can't I know that's an easier one. Arg. And then we're just gonna mutate result. Very functional programming, mutating everywhere, right? And really, these arguments are just other functions. So let's just call them f. f is a nice name for a function, I believe. And we're just gonna call f with result. And then at the very end, we're gonna return result. So let's see if that works as a suitable implementation for pipe. Nope, it does not because I'm doing block scoped, block scoped lat cons. I'm mixing up JavaScripts a little bit here. So let me just, for the sake of making this work, make all these vars. Now, everything is good, awesome. So we've implemented pipe. Now, this isn't really satisfactory to me. Um, there's a much nicer way we could write this. And if you'll notice, what's really happening is we are taking a bunch of functions and a value eventually, and we're squashing them all down to produce a single result. Now, if you're familiar with different kinds of functional programming functions, a very popular one is a fold or a reduce. And what's really happening here is we're reducing a list of functions into one function. That's really all that's happening. So let's go ahead and implement this doing that. And if you'd like to pause the video and try this yourself, I'd recommend it. The key is gonna be reduce. <laughs> Sorry for the spoiler. So we'll need, um, to do this we'll need a constant and we'll make the ID function. ID is just one of the most boring functions in the world. It takes a value or turns a value. The nice thing about ID is that you can compose it or pipe it with any function anywhere and it doesn't change any behavior. So it's a really sensible default for piping. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build a version of pipe that only works on two arguments and we're gonna call this pipe2. And we're not gonna use the curried form, we're gonna use the uncurried form, which if you're not familiar with what that means, I'd recommend watching one of the other videos where I get into that a little more deeply. But basically, we're just gonna accept both arguments at once rather than accepting an f and then returning a function which accepts a g. So with piping, what we do is we take in an x later and we are gonna curry the x, that's important. And once we have that x, what we wanna do is we want to call f on x, because we're piping x through left to right. So we wanna call f on x, and then we wanna call g on the overall result. 
The idea is that data is going to flow, or X is going to flow, first through F, and then the result of that is going to flow through G. So that should be all we need for our pipe 2 variant. Now to build pipe, all we're going to do is we're going to glue together our pipe and our ID, where ID will be the default. If you don't give me any functions, I just will give you the value back when you call me. So to build pipe, I'm just going to use the old function syntax here because I, well, I could use the new um, rest operator in ES6, but I don't think my node version has that yet. So for now, I'm just going to use this. And basically what I want to do is another slice.call on arguments. And these arguments are, of course, going to be the functions. So all we have to do now is reduce the functions in such a way that we want to pipe them together. And if we're given nothing, or the first value we should use is just the ID. And of course, since we're using the old syntax, we have to return. And I believe this should be all we need for pipe. And the tests tell me I'm correct. So if this doesn't make sense to you, I'd uh, take a moment and kind of look it over and study it. But the general idea is that you have a bunch of functions and you want to reduce those functions or translate them into one function. And what better way to do that than by piping them together, starting with ID. So if you don't give me any functions, I'm just going to give you back a function which returns its value. I hope this video was useful for you. It's an interesting take, in my opinion, on the Ramda videos because it's not necessarily directly about Ramda. It's more about what's behind Ramda or what could be behind Ramda and understanding Ramda at a deeper level.